to start off, what was it like growing up? What was that experience like for you? Um, I, have to say I, had, I had an awesome childhood, um, especially comparing it to stuff that I've seen these days um, from working with like inner city youth. And, um, but like, I, I've got motivated into who I am today and my work ethic just basically through sports. Um, I've always had a competitive nature. And I've always played sports. Like I've been competing my whole life. So competing is just, I, I wouldn't even say that the second nature. I would say that it's my first nature. That's, that's what, like, if it's a game, if it's from, from fighting to playing a Monopoly game to playing a video game, like, I always want to win. I always want to be competitive. Um, so that's just, that's just me. That's all I know. And I wouldn't have it any other way with that. Other than that, my my childhood was great. Um, I have really no complaints. I've read somewhere that you started off with, you know, the usual high school sports like football and stuff like that, and then you went into boxing, and then now being where you are in the MMA game, how did that transition happen? Um, well, the main key part in it was the boxing gym that I was at closed down. So me and my trainer, we were, we were out just looking for a gym. Ran across X3 Sports. They made my trainer the, the head boxing instructor. So we was working out there for a while. And I, I saw him doing jiu-jitsu. Like, this is like 2007. I didn't even know what jiu-jitsu was. Like, I'm just like, oh, they're wrestling. Like, like, yeah, I didn't even know what it was. So I was like, I'm... Like, I want to try it. Like, it, it, it looks fun. Um, well, at first, I didn't want to try it. Like, I was like, I don't, I don't want to do that. Like, but then after a while, I was like, man, that actually looks fun. So I tried it one day, and I, I was good at it. So um, I just I kept training it, kept training, kept training for boxing also. And then about eight, nine months later, I had my first fight. Um, yeah, I fought Tex Johnson November 2008, so it was actually a smooth transition, and um, I just, it was something I was good at, and that was another thing, another thing that I could compete at. What was, like, the biggest learning curve, going from boxing to MMA? Um, what the hardest part about transitioning? Um... Actually learning the rest um that's been um a hard transition but that's um yeah that was really because at, at, at one point it was just like I was getting taken butt down by like nine wrestlers and <laughs> it was like we were training wrestling training wrestling and then brought in uh, another wrestling coach and like now it's just starting to click like the, the biggest transition was just how do you how do you be heavy like how do you make your hips heavy like now trying to figure that out is all starting to click for me so like that's I like to say the wrestling aspect of MMA was my hard transition. Do you feel usually when you get into the cage that you have the the striking advantage over most of the fighters you go against uh, having that boxing background? Every time, like I feel like. I would stand up with, any, with, with anybody. Um, like every time I'm that confident within my stand up, yeah, I feel like, like I would stand up with anybody. Getting, like, obviously your gym at clothes you had just mentioned. In Atlanta, I mean, MMA isn't the first, second, third, fourth sport thought about. What did everyone else kind of say when you told them, like, hey, I'm going to go into MMA and I'm going to make it as a professional? What would. What did people around you have to say about that? I was like, man, that's crazy. But, like, growing up in high school, like, I, I, was, always fighting. I was always a fighter. And I just liked to fight. So, mostly, like, nobody was really surprised. But it just, like, confirmed to them that I was crazy. You know, like, man, that's <laughs> where crazy There's no rules. Like, there's nobody's really educated because it's such a young sport. So no one's really educated on it. And it just looks brutal to them. 
So they look at it like, oh man, like that, 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 no, but it's crazy. Like, you, like it, it looks dangerous from the outside looking in. But I mean, it was, I mean, ain't nothing more, ain't, ain't nothing more dangerous than the street fight where there's no rules. That's how I looked at it. Yeah. It's <laughs> a regular, it's a referee. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how, in this rule, like, how much more safer can you get? So you haven't lost a fight in like three years. Is it just you getting comfortable in the sport? Is it, you know, the learning, the groundwork? What's made you so dominant as of late? That's a little bit of both. Um, it's it's the confidence that I've gotten and knowing that I belong where I'm at. Um, at one point it was like, how good am I really? So then the confidence came and then... Just the hard. I put in the work to get that. I, like mentally, physically, on on a strategic side to get to where I'm at. Like I like I I fought the people who complimented my style, but were tough fighters. Mm-hmm. So I was working on my toughness while I was working on my marketability. Also, I mean, because in sports and entertainment, like entertainment, entertainment in general, nobody wants to see someone with the losing record, you know what I mean? So, like, to get to the highest spot, like, you have to test yourself with people who, who compliment you, and I just, I would go out there, I would find someone like, oh, okay, I like this fight. He has a good record. He's tough. But he's not going to go out there and outclass me. Go out there, and I, I was just, I was just putting together wins, putting together wins. And, um, it got me to the show. Um, and after the show was when, well, Jimmy beat me on the show. So as soon as I got off the show, I found my wrestling coach, and it's it's been taking off even even faster since then. Do you think you're even close to your prime or where you can be? You know, usually people say like 27 through 30 in MMA is the prime of someone someone's career, but we've seen people go much further than that, age wise and you know, talent wise. Do you feel like you're Reaching your prime, or you're just still in the early stages of what you can do. I feel like I'm still in the early stages. Like my room to grow and my total potential is like I feel personally like I still have, I still can get a lot better than what I am. So it's like the sky's the limit for me. And that's where a lot of the confidence comes at. Like. I just get 1% better each day, 1% better the next day, 1% better the next day. And then as I'm getting better, um, I've changed my training around to where my strength and conditioning is is off the charts. So I, my, my body's ready. My experience is, is catching up with that. Especially, and then I'm adding weapons to my, to my arsenal every time I go out to train. So... I'm just getting a little bit better each day and staying healthy and doing the right things that I should do to really make a run at this. How hard is it staying healthy in Atlanta? Like, I've been to ATL. I eat all the time while I'm there. Like, how hard is that for you? Well, it's not. For me personally, it's not hard. Some other people might see it different, but it's easy for me. Um, I mean, like, I still bounce at the, at the, at the club that I work at. Like I, I'm, I'm not bouncing, and when it's fight time, everybody knows. Like they see, they see my physique change, and then they might be like, "Oh, you want a shot?" I'm just like, "Nah." Like it's, it's a switch. Yeah. It's an on and off switch. And when I'm ready to fight, that switch is that switch is off. Like all the all the partying, all the eating. Like I'm eating clean because I realize I have to feel my body. I have to feel it to get to that to get to that next um to get through that next training that next training that next training like to really be able to put forth so much to where I can really get get that one percent better. I can put everything into my training. So you just gotta be professional. And being professional is something that just comes easy for me. So heading into this fight this weekend, do you think it's your toughest test so far? Especially for your style. It's someone who's a world-class jiu-jitsu uh, champion. So do you think this is the hardest 
match up for you so far in your career? Um, it's it's, it's definitely gonna be up there. Um, I fought Douglas Lima when I, I was three and up. I fought Douglas Lima. He was twelve and four. I fought him to a decision. So um, that was that was I think that was the hardest test of my career so far. And um, I mean he had to stand up. He had the ground. So it was just like. Like we, he could hang with me standing up. Um, he took me down and he he outclassed me on the ground. So I feel like I've been here, but like I fought somebody who's good on the ground before. So like I fought guys who have his abilities, not probably at his level, but if you look at where I was in 2009 as a um in in my jujitsu game. Compared to where Lima was in his jiu-jitsu game, so now four years later, my jiu-jitsu game compared to world-class um, black belt jiu-jitsu game, like I fought people like him. That's how I. That's how I really look at him. How I feel. But like I look to his record, and I'm like, he hasn't fought anybody as athletic as me, or who hits as hard as me, or who is as tough as me and who, who wants it like me. So that's just that's just how I personally feel. Definitely. His last four fights, he won by submissions. Um, yeah. Four of your last Kamar five. And, and Kamar. Yeah, four of your last five, you won by TKO. It looks like a pretty clean cut uh, matchup going in. If it stays up, it looks like you're... The clear-cut winner. If it goes down, and people in MMA says it's his game. Which way do you see it? Is is it a you're going to beat him either way? What do you say to the people that say, "Oh well, we kind of know how this fight is going to go." I got to stay on top, and it comes down to who controls the wrestling. If I can control the wrestling, defend his takedowns, take him down when I want to, it goes my way. If 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 he comes out and and wrestles me and, and takes me down and stays on top of, top of me and is able, able to control me, then the fight's going to go his way. So as it just comes, it comes down to, like, when you have a fight like this, it comes down to that that third um, attribute, the wrestling. Your striker versus grappler comes down to the wrestling. Do you think you can knock him out? Like, do you think that this fight has the capability of ending by knockout in your favor? I definitely think so. Um, I mean, I, I saw his fight against Michael Falcao, and he took a lot of shots. Um, I never I never trained with Falcao, but, I mean, it just doesn't look like he hits as hard as me. I personally doesn't, don't think he does. Um, but... It's just one of those things, like, if I hit you once, if I hit you twice, like, there's not many people who can stand up to my power over and over and over again. Like, my last fight, like, it ended up going to decision because I dropped him, then I realized, like, I can just out, I can just outpoint him. So... I just outpointed him through a hundred seventy percent. Just outpointed him, and my last fight, and went for the win. Um, I was throw, I was throwing a couple hard shots in there, but he he was retreating so much that I I just had to stay smart and outpoint him, outpoint him. Um, but basically, like, but now I I I need a I need another finish to really get to where I want to be. Where do, where do you want to be in the next year, next couple of years? You've made such a great jump already. Is, you know, going for a championship already in your mind? Is everything you're doing positioning yourself for that? I mean, that's definitely, I'm definitely, with my, my strategy, I'm definitely trying to position myself to, to get that title fight. Um, but I'm not rushing it at the same time. Um, by the end of 2015, I want to be cracking, cracking that top ten. Um, that's, that's the plan that I've made for myself, so, but then again, it just keeps, it depends on who, who the UFC gives me, 
I mean, I want this. I'll be four and zero. Like, do they give me a a ranked guy to give me another guy who's around my rank? It, it just depends. So, um, I ideally, I would like to start fighting those ranked guys towards um towards like early 2015. Like uh, February, May, somewhere in that time, start start trying to chip away into the top ten. Start that start start in the top fifteen, come into the top ten, and just keep winning. And then it's 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 a no brainer. Hey, thanks for talking to me today, Clint. Man, it was a great interview. Uh, you're on a great appreciate path. It. Can't wait to watch your fight this weekend. I appreciate it.